Hi there and welcome to Capital View, our new political show here on ET Now. What message are the voters of Jharkhand and Jammu and Kashmir sending out in this last big election of 2014 in the Assembly elections of Jammu and Kashmir and Jharkhand? To discuss the election fallout, we have Sudhanshu Mittal of the BJP joining us, Manisha Priyam, political analyst, Sanjay Singh, political editor of First Post, and we also have Manish Tiwari of the Congress Party. Thanks everyone very much indeed for being here. Manish Tiwari, first to you, how do you see the Jammu and Kashmir vote? Verdict. Do you see it as a reflection of a totally divided state or do you see it as an opportunity for healing that divide, for bridging that divide? Well, Sagrika, I think you've characterized it absolutely correctly. It's a hugely fractured and a polarizing verdict. Uh, the Bharatiya Janata Party was unable to win a single seat uh, in the valley. They have not won in Ladakh, the only place where they have really won. And of course, uh, one, uh, quite a few seats is Jammu. But if you look at Jammu and Kashmir in the historical context, uh, the one thing which emerges very clearly is that it's a very hugely polarizing verdict and that is extremely worrying. So therefore, going forward, depending upon as to how uh, the next government really comes into existence, uh, the central government will have to play a huge role and will have to walk that extra mile in order to ensure that uh, the, the bridges between Srinagar and Delhi are built and remain intact. So that should, this division that has come to the fore, this Hindu, Jammu, Muslim valley, is this the biggest challenge now, as Manish is saying, for the new government as well as for the central government? You see, when he talks about Bharatiya Janata Party only winning in the Jammu region, the converse is also true. PDP has only won three seats in the Jammu region, in spite of the fact that they nearly swept the polls in the valley. So there is an obvious divide. The messages which the voters have given is twofold. One, they have rejected the old establishment. NC, Congress, there is a rejection. Because it's a rejection of a misrule and it's a rejection of a corrupt regime. People have also rejected the separatists. You know, the 76% polar voters turnout is something we must be, we should eulogize. What a verdict. People have defied the calls for uh, boycott of elections. They have come out and they've decisively given their minds. Now, certainly government formation is a very, very critical thing. This divide between the valley and the, and the Jammu region needs to be covered up. So ideally, a government which is formed there must represent the aspirations of both the valley as well as the Jammu region. Such a government would not only last its full term, but also would be integrating the entire state. But how possible is, that, is such a government? How possible is that ruling arrangement? Manisha Priyam, we're seeing these two very strong identities come up in Jammu and in the Kashmir Valley. Does it to an extent illustrate the complexity of Jammu and Kashmir? Does it illustrate even an unraveling? perhaps of the unity of the state. You're right. This is a very, very complex verdict in the sense that two very strong parties come up and each of them have promised to their voters, to the electorate, to which has put them there with these large numbers, a very distinct and different agenda. However, if we look at the verdict in its totality, people of both regions have voted with a very strong mandate and with a very strong mind to bring both of them together to run the future house of the Jammu and Kashmir Assembly. In the large turnouts, I would interpret the following. I would think that a certain faith was put in the democratic process, seen as being fair, towards leading to a fulfillment of different aspirations. So I think the challenge of government is that these two parties that have been brought in by the electorate in large numbers somehow come together, understand, what is it that they need to do in government, notwithstanding their differences of agenda, when they went to the electorate? They, Governments they need to come together, but how far are their local leaderships, the local constituencies, assuming there's going to be, say, a partnership between the BJP and the PDP, we don't know, assuming that there's going to be a partnership or if there's moving towards a partnership, how can the local leaderships come together? Because it's all very well for the leaders at the top to form an arrangement, but what about the karyakartas on the ground who are at loggerheads with each other, given the serious Serious ideological differences, the complete difference in outlook. How can local leaderships uh, mesh if such a if such a unity is to be established? 
that problem will be there and this challenge is largely for the leadership of PDP and the BJP. Best possible alliance uh, for people of Jammu and Kashmir would be PDP and BJP. BJP always knew that it is not going to achieve 44, howsoever tall claim that was. Internal uh, assessment was of only 25 and they got 25. Now the results have given a verdict which means that people of Jammu, and Jammu region overwhelmingly want BJP to run the state government. In the valley, they want PDP and Ladakh, of course, Congress, they have voted for Congress. The challenge for Modi and Amit Shah is to, and also uh, Mufti Mohammed Said and uh, Mahbuba Mufti, is to bring them together. If they can, they if they can, if they can out outgrow <laughs> the ideological undertoes of both their parties. Manish, uh, what, what, do you, what in your opinion is the best ruling arrangement for Jammu and Kashmir? Would it be PDP and BJP, given the fact that they are single largest and second single largest? Or would it be PDP and Congress? What is the best ruling arrangement from your point of view for the long-term future of Jammu and Kashmir? Sagrika, before I address that question, allow me to make a few observations. Uh, this is the third or the fourth election that we are seeing since 1996. You know, 1996, 2003, 2008, and 2014. And in each of these elections, the turnout has been fairly substantial. But that does not mean that you can completely write off the separatist element in, uh, in, in Kashmir. They have their own constituency. And if anyone interprets the verdict uh, in a manner as if the separatists have been completely written off, that is a fundamental mistake which would be uh, made by whosoever comes into government. Insofar as what would be uh, the best possible arrangement, I think that the best possible arrangement, and I'm not saying it because uh, I represent the Congress party, would perhaps be a PDP Congress government. But uh, where is your that... mandate? Where is your <laughs> mandate? You have they, 12 seats. I'll, 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 I'll allow me to complete. Uh, in fact, if you look at it last time also, the Congress had 18 seats. The Congress is down to 12 seats. All that we have lost is really five seats. And the reason why I'm saying that a PDP Congress alliance would perhaps be the best for Jammu and Kashmir because given the complexity of Jammu and Kashmir, <laughs> given the fact that it epitomizes the idea of India, I do but not think a theocratic... Well, you have to see the theocratic idea of India कि राष्ट्रहित का अपमान देखना है इस दोनों में फर्क है पर अलाव में जो कब्जा है आप कहते हैं कि जनादेश राष्ट्रीय नहीं होता I, 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 I don't think the भारतीय जनता पार्टी <laughs> really in Jammu and Kashmir is representative of the politics of that state Amazing. notwithstanding <laughs> that they may have won seats in Jammu. Okay, let me get you to react that, that for the long term interest minute. of yeah. Jammu and Kashmir this it's the PDP the, Congress yeah. government that is important that that is needed. This is the most perverse of all arguments I've ever heard. A, a rejected, defeated, uh, a, a completely, uh, what do I say, a, a, a party which, where people have said no, is aspiring again through, through all kind of things to be in power. Just lis listen to this. Three years they have had a chief minister in the last 12 years. And in the rest of the period they have been in the government, first choosing uh, uh, NC, then PDP, NC, now again wanting to choose uh, PDP. When they have been squarely and flatly rejected by people. Look, achha, let, let's go by his arithmetics. 28 is what PDP has. They have 12. That makes it 40. You need 45. So what you'll do, you'll cobble up every single element which is out of those seven which are others to be a part of the government or whatever. A government dependent on each independent MLA would give you the stability, would represent the would aspirations that give you the stability of the Jammu and Kashmir. Let me get you to and that would be national let me get interest. You to respond and to that BJP will not be in national interest. Amazing. I think he has a misconception, uh, misconception about what national interest is. National interest in Jammu and Kashmir is you must have a stable government, a clean government, a government which is working for de development and not a current government to, uh, which they have always been a part to of. That. Manish? Well, if Sudhanshu Mittal has quietened down and his excitement is under check, then I would respond to the points that he has made. And the response is as follows. The first thing that we need to keep in mind is that the electoral rhetoric 
of the PDP and the Bharatiya Janata Party is completely incompatible. Yes, there is a school of thought which says that while in uh, campaign mode, say one thing, while in government do another thing, which of course the BJP has become quite apt at, but ultimately that arrangement is not sustainable because you become prisoners of your own rhetoric at some point in time or the other. And if at all there is a BJP, let me, what, what let me just, no, it, it, it would fall apart. Let me complete. Let me, let, let, let me complete, Sagrika. Number two is the, 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 the chemistry of the verdict. The chemistry <laughs> of the PDP and the Bharatiya Janata Party <laughs> is fundamentally incompatible. It is Sir, like chocolate. The chemistry is incompatible. It's like, okay, it's, 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 two, it's two like comparing can, apples and pears. And like, allow me to complete because, now? you know, Sodancho's excitement finish, is outrunning floor, him. But, but allow, me to, you have a right to allow me to complete. By your the third thing which I want sure. to say is that given the peculiar nature of how Jammu and Kashmir is structured, Jammu being predominantly Hindu, Kashmir being predominantly Muslim, and Ladakh being predominantly Buddhist, you see, a, a, a party which only has the raison d'etre in one particular section of that state or in one particular region of that state may not really be good for Let government. Let me just yes. put that to you. It's Let the, me put the, that the, to you. The, the BJP PDP alliance would actually militate against the concept of stability. Sir, can I, it would can militate. I, can I uh, whether it's on AFSPA, which uh, PDP wants to immediately roll back, whether it's on three, Article 370, which the PDP insists on, whether it's on its so-called soft separatist line, there are BJP leaders who have called PDP anti-national. How is your chemistry going to work? See, let, let's start with first the chemistry. You have to appreciate that BJP has done business both with NC and PDP in the past and has successfully done it. So let's not talk about chemistry. Secondly, when you talk about election uh, No, stances, but again, the same point. Your local, I, 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 your local just, 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 How will they just, get on with each I'll other? I'll explain. I'll explain. Just give me a minute. As far as electoral rhetorics which Mr. Tiwari was referring to, I don't think when he went to elections in Jammu uh, in Kashmir, he said, no, no, PDP is a very good party and you should vote for PDP party. He said, look, no, 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 look, I, just, just, just... Are there too I, many I, tensions? I, 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 are I there just, way too no, many I'll, tensions I'll, I'll, in this I'll, relationship which will okay, be a precarious the government? The researcher and the academic in me tells me that look at the fact that out of this verdict in Jammu and Kashmir, the victors and the vanquished, all of them want to form the government. So there is faith in the democratic process. There is faith in becoming part of a state level government in India. So reaffirmation, I know the pitch is being queered by saying there are separatists, but are we to say that the Congress party, I think it's fourth in the li lineup yeah. in the assembly, yeah. is the only party <laughs> that can guarantee the country against the separatists. Am I not to believe that the queering the pitch about the fear of the separatists is that the only way to enter the portals of the JNK assembly? The Congress party certainly needed to have a positive agenda. That's my counter there. But my other point here is that look at the specificity of the queered pitch that the BJP itself had in Jammu. A lot of those things are stuff that will never go down with the electorate in but Kashmir. But you know, it's, it's a political risk. Your it's a portals. political risk. Is the BJP no, no. na ghar ka na ghat ka? Because agar you have to water 370, down. You have to water if you, down. If you water Sajika. down 370, you, you lose in Jammu. If you don't water down 370, you I, won't win I, in Valley. I, so you lose. You, you're in. You're, you may be lose lose Sajika. through this through this alliance. Let's look at one fundamental point. Now, when you find a solution, then you can only find a solution where there is acceptability between two people to run a government together. And when they're running, when they're going to run a government together, there are parameters which will uh, which will bind you in saying there, you're going to be bound by parameters Absolutely. which is going to reflect a new Kashmir, a new kind of thinking in Kashmir. Manish, separatists unfortunately are a reality in uh, in, in Kashmir. The politics of Let separatism the army is a, them. They, they they kindly do not interrupt. You know, I no, did no, not some, interrupt you. I have the patience yeah. to listen. The 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 politics of separatism is a reality. Cross-border infiltration from Pakistan is a reality. The kind of activity on the international border and the line of control what you've seen in the last this? six months, you've perhaps not seen in the past. But what is that to do with this? So, so, the so, so, so therefore, so therefore so the, please kindly have the patience. You know, right. don't jump down my throat. The, the, every the vanquished prime wants of us India, to believe that Pandit the victors Nehru have been vanquished. Words, till the current <laughs> prime minister, when they talk about you know, talking in the realm of insaniyat or use other such 
terminology, they are not talking about those people who are in the mainstream. They are obviously mm. trying to reach out to the separatists. Right. So if let the me, separatists me, were not a reality, why would they reach comment. out to them? Okay, on a, a last comment on this segment. The fact is the issue of Jammu and Kashmir is still alive. The, 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 yeah, troubled, mil, the troubled issue, the militancy issue, the, all that is still alive. And so therefore, is this kind of ruling arrangement going to be able to provide that healing touch? On a theoretical level, what Manish Tiwari is saying is correct. That separatists are there and PDP and Congress would be natural ally. Also, if that alliance happens, that will also reflect on leader of opposition post in Rajya Sabha. That is also very critical for Congress. Mind you, that is also an issue. Looks like that will not happen because in politics, after all, you don't go by theoretical presumptions. There is also, it's game of numbers. Let's take a short break at this point and come back and talk about Jharkhand and also look at the larger political themes that have marked the year 2014. That's after the break. Welcome back to Capital View. We're discussing the fallout of the elections in Jammu and Kashmir and Jharkhand. We have been talking about Jammu and Kashmir in the previous segment. In this segment, let's focus on Jharkhand and also look at the broad political contours that have shaped the year 2014. Manish Tiwari, let me come to you on Jharkhand, another state where the Congress has suffered yet another defeat in the year 2014. Now, is it going to accelerate what we commentators and journalists and politicians as well are talking about all the time, which is the leadership crisis in your party. Well, Sagrika, there is a certain logic to politics. And at times, you have a situation whereby the, uh, uh, the, the, the trend in the Lok Sabha elections does continue for a certain period of time. In the uh, cycle of electoral politics, you have ups and you have downs. Unfortunately, there is a certain downturn at this oh, point in Manisha time. Manisha is shaking her head. You know, the issue here is that even if you lost the elections in Jharkhand, here was a state, and especially its tribals, tribals here as elsewhere, have reposed their faith in the Congress traditionally for a long time. It appeared on the ground that the Congress had literally abandoned the Vidhan Sabha elections for this time. Even if the Congress were to lose the elections, what was the harm in campaigning effectively? When Rahul Gandhi campaigned, as he did in Jharkhand, it seemed the top leadership of the Congress party was not behind him. The Congress party was not there to claim the benefits of a lot of the governance interventions that had been made by the party. For example, the Operation Saranda, Mr. Jairam Ramesh, who was to be seen at the Rachi airport literally being the special governance advisor to the state. Now, nowhere to be seen when Mr. Rahul Gandhi turned back. He didn't have a second rung of leadership behind him. There was no effective campaign of the party there. And therefore, it strikes me that did you fight an effective battle? Did you, even were you even were, fighting? Were you even fighting in even Jharkhand, Manish Tiwari? Even if it were a loss. Well, uh, first of all, Mr. Jairam Ramesh is not from Jharkhand. Uh, Mr. So Jairam what was Ramesh he doing in Jharkhand? Then why was he there? All the time. Operation Why do you Sarat? keep jumping down my throat? I'm answering Sagrika. Hold your horses. Okay, go ahead. Jairam, no Jairam Ramesh had a specific governance mandate which he was fulfilling. But that does not mean that it gets extrapolated to a political role. Insofar as the political battle is concerned, the political battle has to always is always fought by the state leadership. Yes, you know, there are circumstances at times when you do not do well in a particular state, but that does not mean that you don't come back. And right, let, me bring, let, me, let me put to you, the fact is in the Lok Sabha uh, elections, you were ahead in 51, I think 50 plus assembly segments. This time you've only made 41. So is it a disappointing no, result no, for Sadika, you also? You've, then, not, you've no, not scored no, not that high. You have to understand the history of Jharkhand. It's a state where no alliance has ever been voted with majority. This is the first time. And what is the reason? The two folds. One is the desire of the people of Jharkhand to have a stable government. What is critical is people across this country are looking for leadership they can trust. See, for leadership, there are two critical elements. You must have a dream in your eye and you must have fire in your belly. Praveen Singh of the JDU said yesterday on one of the channels that Jharkhand ki haar hui hai, Delhi ki jeet hui hai. Because all the local <laughs> leaders of Jharkhand have lost. Yeah. You know, whether yeah. it's Arjun Munda, whether it's uh, Hemant Soren, whether it's uh, Mr. Sudesh Mahato, they've all lost. Babu but this Marandi is Babulal Marandi, the big loser. But this is a win for Delhi. He says perhaps because Janta Parivar has com completely lost it out. 
that too a day after they held this particular rally in Delhi. But the point that he was making, if you look at in larger context, Jharkhand verdict has thrown up a new kind of, uh, given a new kind of message whereby all established leader of Jharkhand yeah. have lost. Arjun Munda lost, as you said, Babulal Marandi lost, Madhu Kora lost. Three chief ministers, Babulal Marandi incidentally lost from two seats. Mm -hmm. So they are looking for a new leadership, new set of ideas, new set of people, and also an absolute majority to a single party. That but is what critical. What Brand Modi has done is literally put the BJP house in order because Jharkhand had been ruled by coalitions, not just of the Congress, but also of the BJP. Right. So a lot of what you saw in Jharkhand was also a failure, in fact, of the old BJP. Right. So Mr. Narendra Modi has represented the new BJP and Hemant Soren indeed has represented, if you realize, not just the leaders that Sanjay has named, but also the fact that of his cabinet ministers, there's just one who has won the elections. Right. Therefore, a new and reinvigorated local regional leadership, and that's but the also possible... does the BJP have to a new order now? The BJP yeah, government yeah. has to yes, because, because, because Modi has said, "Sapno ka Bharat aap mujhe poorn bhagmat dijiye." Because, 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 because now, now it has to. You can't just go by on brand so, Modi then. Sadika, it can't just be brand Modi Jharkhand, because you have to now start delivering. Jharkhand has elected both the ruling party and the opposition together, and mm. that's the message for the BJP. That's a very if good they point. do not deliver, you know, the opposition is at the door. Let me put to Manish Tiwari. Has this been your anus horribilis? Well, Sagrika. Every setback is a, a cause for optimism. It's a cause to look forward. And so therefore, yes, you know, there have been reverses. There have been defeats. But that does not mean uh, that the Congress party has either lost its, its essence or its substance. So therefore, we do hope that 2015, you know, will uh, usher in better prospects. But on a lighter note, let me just respond to what Sudhanshu Mittal had said you know, about a gleam in the eye and the fire in the belly, I just hope that the gleam in the eye does not become dictatorial and the fire in the belly does not make somebody a demagogue. Is that a danger? Is that a danger? Are, are you, are you in danger of arrogance? Check, are you I, in danger of a high command culture I, also? And, and, and that, you know, that you are also becoming arrogant and, 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 and overconfident. See, there is a saying in Hindi, mein, Sabko maloom hai jannat ki haqeeqat, lekin Maniji dil ke khush rakhne ko galibi hai khayal achcha hai. Chali, haage no, the, the, Achha, the, the criticism, as, the criticism as, is that you you become a result-making no, no. election machine. You become an election factory. That Mr. Modi goes all around the world propagating Indian greatness, but then your cadres at home are doing polarization. Sadrika, your cadres at Sadrika. home are practicing polarizing politics. Whereas this is this is the duality, which is a result-making uh, election-making factory. Sadrika, with every success comes responsibility also. And we are well aware of that. Okay. Is it too early in the day to say that the BJP has emerged as a premier national party and that the Congress is 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 is, is in a decline, or is it do we do we have to wait for a little while to make that conclusion? Uh, yes, indeed, this is a tectonic shift in the sense that the election machine has registered its victories, is likely to do so even in the coming days of 2015. So, if 2014 was the year when popular aspirations were put towards a certain kind of mandate, let 2015 be the year of performance. Let the first quarter of 2015 now, I think six months of electioneering or Enough a year of, of campaigning. Absolutely. Now let's have the delivery. Let 2015 show this. India's poorest have put all they had, which is something called home. Mm. And look at the basic things they're looking for. When during the Lok Sabha elections, I was trailing the campaign in Arwal, in Jahanabad, where the poorest had once rebelled through ultra-left rebellions, they said this time they would do a vote on the Kamal Chap, and their aspirations were lowering of prices for lemons, which they said was selling at rupees 10 apiece, or getting what they call a ghod of Kela. They said if prices were going to be this high at Chhat this time, they would not be able to take the traditional bunch, but only a piece. For them, their sons right. going to trains on to Surat, to Pimpri Chinchwad to work, for them the aspirations of a balanced household with two square meals is that what we think is the worth of Indian democracy? 2015 will start with Delhi elections, close with Bihar elections. Two very critical elections for Narendra Modi to deliver again. But in the meanwhile, he also will have to deliver on the promises that he has made. His challenge has actually to lay now there. start delivering. So you have to See, snap out of campaign the, mode and start delivering because this is the only window you have. Because government. soon you'll have Bihar elections and then UP elections and then West Bengal. We're going to have to wind up. I'm just going to put to Manish Tiwari. There's just one last question. Have you comprehended the changes that has resulted from your own change of economy. You know, when you changed, when, when, when the, the great liberalization of 1991 and the kind of politics that emerged from it, has the Congress Party comprehended that political tectonic shift? 
Well, Sagrika, you're absolutely correct. You know, there is an economic transformation which came about, and that also brought it's created about a political, a political transformation. transformation. And what the uh, Congress was not able to comprehend that this election was the Rockefeller moment of Indian politics. This was not so much as the BJP against the Congress as corporate India against the Congress party. <laughs> if I may add but is, is, is Rahul Gandhi at all accountable for all the reverses you've suffered this year or no? It's no fault well, of Rahul Gandhi. Well, 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 well Sagrika, I think you've run that gauntlet ad nauseum. And ad nauseum we've told you that as a party we are responsible and accountable to the people for what we do and what okay. we do not do. And so therefore, okay. let me so close the, off the, by the saying this one thing. If we did not understand the politics okay. you know, of the economy, the unfortunately, this government in the last six months has not understood the economy. Okay. And that's you going to... Not understood the, the, politics, the, the you have not understood the economy. Understand they the have economy, not understood the, the economy failing. and that's going to be their actually The government did not understand the governance, yet we could do away with the corruption which was perpetrated during the Congress. The government did not understand anything. Yet the people are asking for you, Mr. But I think there's a warning for you. As Sanjay is saying, as Manisha is saying, the time for campaigning is now over and we're going to have to look at the delivery. And we are already in the process of delivering. We are already in the process of delivering. Thank you very much indeed to all my guests for joining me. That brings us to the end of this edition of Capital View. Thanks for watching. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.